a Ministry of General Education and Instruction in partnership with the International Organization launched Back to Learning campaign during and after COVID-19 Phase 1 today. The launching brought teachers, students and pupils from different schools across Juba. The schools were Juba One Boys and Girls, Juba Day Secondary School and Juba Girls Secondary School. Addressing the gathering, the Vice President, His Excellency Hussein Abdul Baghi Akol challenged the teachers and students to put on the face mask as the first priority to prevent COVID-19. He assured the government readiness in improving the teachers' salary structure. I'm pleased to be here this morning to facilitate the reopening of the schools in South Sudan. The outbreak of coronavirus in the world compared us in this country to close down school in March in order to protect our children, teachers and communities from the pandemic. We are reopening the school, the school today, but it is important to remember that the problem the outset COVID-19 has not disappeared. It is still with us here and here. Therefore, and as indicated in the banner, safe learning during and after COVID-19, we need to adhere to COVID-19 protocol measures in the schools. And it is very important for each school and to the director from us say that they can form their own task force to fight the COVID-19 during these reopening days. We are going to open. This is why the government decided to, to reopen the school in two phases. Phase one, the private aid and secondary senior four. And the phase two is going to, to be the whole remainder classes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important to remind you that to fight the COVID-19, we have to make sure that there is no handshaking. You have to wear the mask. You have to wash your hand with the soap and the priority. In the schools, temperature of the children should be monitored every morning. Children will have to sit far in the classes, at least three meters away, or three feet away from each other. They will also have to regularly wash their hands. This is not the only to protect themselves from the virus, but more important to protect their parents, families at home, and the communities as well. For the teachers, I want to say, feel October 2020 is indirectly marked the World Teachers Day. It is the day the world reflect on the important role teachers play in the society. Teachers have a noble role to play in the preparation of the children, not only for the for teaching, learning, or examination, but is have a good role to prepare them for a good life and the future for all. These children are the future and hope of our country. We therefore commit ourselves to support the teacher during this difficult, difficult period. In my class, the service is delivered class 
the education and the health are two backbone of our cluster. And we have to fight very hard. That's our priority to help the teachers, especially to prepare their salaries and not salaries, the new hierarchy of salaries. We have to fight to put them. I promise you I will work hard to deliver on this. And I want to assure you again that I'm going to work hard to fight on behalf of the teachers and those who are working in the health field. I want to conclude my saying by saying that I trust our teacher will teach our children and ensure that the students learn and complete the services in the short period. For the development partners, for our development partners, I'm happy that I can see many of them here today. On behalf of you, pupils and teachers and everybody in Southern Sudan and on behalf of our government, I want to thank you all for your support to education in South Sudan. We appreciate your assistance always. Although I could not mention all of you here, I must mention key donors, such as the United Kingdom, USA, European Union, Canada, China, and Norway, but to mention a few. These countries have made a tremendous support to education in South Sudan over the years. I want to assure that the government of South Sudan will commit itself to increase its education budget this year. And if not, we are going to fight for it. We must invest in our children and their future. For my daughters and sons, I will I wish you all successful academic year. Meanwhile, the Minister of General Education, Honorable Awudeng Achwil, urged the teachers to double their efforts in teaching in order to finish the syllabus before the examination. I would appreciate the effort of the international NGOs toward the reopening of the schools in South Sudan. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your Excellency, the Vice President, we are extremely delighted to have you this afternoon as a guest of honor for this important occasion, the reopening of school. I have, I remember it was Your Excellency who announced the decision of the Presidency to close down schools in March. It is therefore appropriate that you announce the reopening of the schools. I will have very little to say this afternoon. However, with your permission, Your Excellency, I would like to say today that is a very good day for the children of South Sudan, especially the students in candidate classes. The ministry decided to reopen school, especially for primary eight and senior four. This is in order to prepare the student in these classes for examination in February and March 2021. Reopening the school in phases was a difficult decision for us in the ministry. Unfortunately, the threat posed by the coronavirus has imposed on us reopening the school in phases. In phase two, we will reopen the school for all in April 2021. During phase one, I know that most of the children will be at home. We will continue the distant learning program, delivering lessons on radio and TV. I am pleased to inform you that with assistance from U.S. 
ID, USAID, UNICEF has procured 32,000 radio sets that will be distributed to remote areas across the country to enable the children to follow the lessons on the radio. I want all our parents to encourage their children, especially girls, to listen to their lessons. The closure of the school has negative impact on our girls. And I think it was articulated this morning by one of our students. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of work has gone into opening the school. In order to adhere to COVID-19 protocols, the ministry has to prepare the school to reopen safely. In this respect, we prioritize the worst facilities in schools, such as water and soap, to enable children and teachers to wash their hands. In some schools that have no access to water, we are going to dig the ball to provide water. Also, a student and teachers will have to wear face masks, and we will provide the thermometer guns to school to measure temperature of students and teachers in the morning before classes. This huge work was not done by the government alone. It was jointly carried out by both the ministry and the key partners in education. I particularly wish to recognize on behalf of all the children and teachers in South Sudan, our development partners for their support. We thank you all. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I especially want to appreciate the continuous backing we receive from UNICEF, Save the Children, and UNESCO during this difficult time. The champion for this work are Dr. Mohammed of UNICEF, Mr. Bandi of UNESCO, and Ms. Rama from Save the Children International. I would like them to stand up and please let us clap our hands for their appreciation in this leadership. I want to assure you with our donors that the children of South Sudan will always remember you. Finally, I urge the teachers to double their efforts to complete the syllabus so that the pupils successfully sit their examination at the end of the extended academic year. With the leadership of our Vice President, I am certain that the working condition of our teachers will be improved. I promise all the children in South Sudan that the Ministry and the development partners are committed to deliver quality education to you. As I said in the beginning of my remarks, my main role here this afternoon is to introduce the guest of honor to inaugurate the launching of Back to Learning campaign. We are privileged to have the Vice President as the head of the service delivery cluster in the government. His Excellency Hussein Abdel Bari Accord is the dedicated is the, the, the dedicated to ensuring that the government prioritizes services, especially education. In him we have the best champion of education in South Sudan. Before I call him, I want to congratulate the teacher on this special day of Teacher Day 
without teachers who will not talk about the future of South Sudan. So teachers are the key. Teachers are the key for the development of our children. And the teachers are the key that will invest on the children. And you can see the quality of the services that they have delivered in the two young people who spoke here today. Congratulations, my teachers. We will work together with the members of parliament, and I'm going to take the Minister of Finance by his words. Education is supposed to have 15% in the national budget. That's what is required to invest and build a young nation like South Sudan, which is behind because of the war that was fought in many years. So we will work together as a team to ensure that education receive what it deserves in the country. However, the representative of UNESCO, Mr. Julius Bundy said, being at school saved many girls from early marriage. He appeals to the government to emphasize on education and improve on the salary structure of teachers across the country. Honorable Minister of General Education and Instruction, Madam Award Dame Akui, uh, Minister of Youth and Sport, Dr. Abino, Deputy Minister of Finance, uh, members of the National Assembly, um, members of the Diplomatic Corps, um, representatives of the international and national NGOs, my colleagues in the UN family, um, the honorable uh, two speakers that spoke on behalf of the students, and honorable students, distinct guests, ladies and gentlemen. Each time uh, the school bell rings and the, and, and the school doors open, the UNESCO family rejoices. So I am deeply grateful to be here today uh, to witness this occasion. We are deeply uh, happy to see that finally uh, the road back to school is a reality in South Sudan. And I don't want to make a, a long bureaucratic speech because I'm learning from the two uh, ladies that spoke before me. It's better to speak from the heart rather than, uh, rather than go through these uh, diplomatic, bureaucratic speeches. So can I just say a few words, therefore, um, from my heart to commend the decision of government to reopen schools, uh, even if it is in a phased manner. The school closures really affected uh, their uh, children as they have eloquently. There are a lot of lessons that we can learn from the impact of COVID-19 on the education sector, particularly here in South Sudan. Allow me to just uh, cite a few very rapidly. The first one, as the two ladies uh, mentioned, there is the issue of gender equality that continues to be affected. Health, child education is much more uh, needed now than ever before. And uh, everyone knows this program, everybody mentioned it in their speeches, and I'm sure the other spe speeches that are going to come after me, they are going to mention it too. But I believe, UNESCO believes strongly that it's now time to start finding innovative solutions to this issue of girl-child education in South Sudan. Learning from just the neighboring countries, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, you can go further afield in Southern Africa. It has been seen that over the past 60 years, uh, countries have used boarding schools for girls uh, to bridge the gender gap. When, when girls get to 13, 14, take them into boarding schools for four or five years, you prepare them for a brighter future. I would encourage uh, the government and also the donor community to look closely at this issue in South Sudan. 
if it was important to do this in Kenya, if it was important to do this in Uganda, if it was important to do this in Tanzania, or in my own country, Malawi, it is much more important to do it in South Sudan, boarding schools for girls. We need to be very agile. We need modern classrooms all over the country, where social distance is possible, and, and the possibility of having clean environment to learn, to avoid any pandemic or infectious diseases. We urgently need to invest in ICTs to extend radio coverage, to extend TV coverage from Juba to all parts of the country. Maybe one day, South Sudan Broadcasting Corporation will really become a national broadcasting corporation and not Juba Broadcasting Corporation covering the whole of South Sudan so that in cases of pandemic, lessons can be carried through the South Sudan Broadcasting Corporation. We need digital learning. The internet is not a luxury in Agenda 2030. Each country, including South Sudan, must have a master plan to extend inter internet access to all parts of this nation so that then learning can continue at any, any time, distance learning, and also it's good for business. It's also good for good governance. Um, it's good for everything, actually. Um, and uh, on, uh, let me also uh, conclude by uh, drawing this lesson that teachers must be on the center of all our plans. As it has already been stated, no teacher, no lesson. No teacher, no learning. Today, as we celebrate World Teachers' Day, it is important to remember that teachers are the key to our learning. Teachers are the key uh, in the classroom. So we celebrate Teachers' Day today, and um, teachers are leading in crisis, reimagining the future, and we join everyone to salute our teachers the teachers of South Sudan, who play an important role in, make, in making learning a possibility. And let me just say that um, we need to make sure that teachers are guaranteed good training, good employment conditions, that they are paid good salaries, paid on time, and uh, our plea to government is to make sure that any budgets for teachers is ring fast, it's made available on a regular basis, on time. The representative of the students, Anger Nyok from Jubade Secondary School, said Peanut School helped them from joining bad groups. She calls for the rest of the pupils and students to be patient at home until the next phase of which they will join them in school. First and foremost, I need to give thanks to God Almighty, the creator of the universe. Because of his loving kindness, that's why we are here today, celebrating this day. And secondly, I need to give thanks to our government, the Minister of Education, different NGOs, for coming up with that idea of reopening of the schools and for and for their cooperations with our teachers. I need to thank you so much and I congratulate you. And I also congratulate you because you have realized that we are the seats of today. We are the bridge to the glorious future of this country. I would like to talk on the challenges that face us as the students when we are at home during the lockdown of the pandemic COVID-19. We have that most of our colleagues from different schools and in different parts of the country drop out of school due to poverty and lack of other things. And to others, the student is so painful. When you ask that, a student who is with you in the class has dropped out of, of the school, but today the schools are reopened. Wow, we are back to school and God has answered our prayer. Not only that, but also I would like to say that when we are at home, most students do not have that my time of concentrating on their books. Take for instance, girls. Girls, they don't have my time of revising in the school, but when they are at home, the kitchen became their classroom, cooking utensils became their scholastic material, but today the schools are reopened. Wow, we have that better future. Not on that, my last point is, when we were at home as the students, we used to face that stress. Every morning
morning you wake up, you are at home. Tomorrow you wake up, you are at home. You think to yourself, oh, what is going on really? Is my future going ahead or backward? But today the schools are reopened. God has answered our prayer and today we are going to be back into to our school. The school was closed down seven months ago by the presidential decree due to COVID-19 pandemic. Reporting for Dolco Media, I am Jennifer James in Juba.